Welcome to the Loopy Pro video manual. This is video one in a series of videos all about Loopy Pro. Together with the creator of Loopy Pro, Michael and myself are making a series of videos to help you get up and running and understand Loopy Pro in a series of tutorials. As this series expands, we'll be making its own playlist so you can watch it from beginning all the way through. So right from the beginning, what is Loopy Pro? At its heart, Loopy Pro is a live looper. It lets you record and layer pieces of sound that you play on loops to perform and construct musical arrangements on the fly. But it goes way further than that. It has a completely brand new audio engine and includes a variety of tools to customize your workflow so you can use Loopy Pro for a lot more than just live looping. Loopy Pro is a live looper. It's also a sampler. It's a clip launcher, a musical scratch pad. It could be your DAW, a sequencer and a ranger, a mixer or live mixer. It's also an audio unit host, supporting effects, synthesizers, and even MIDI sequences. And the most unique thing about Loopy Pro is it's a completely customizable work surface but we'll go into that a little bit later in this video now when you very first launched Loopy Pro it looks like this and before you get running with it you need to understand a couple of concepts first of all you have these big circles and they're called clips clips in Loopy Pro are the individual pieces of audio or loops and you can use them in two different ways you can use them as a loop or as a one shot so it just plays once Loopy Pro works to a BPM but you don't have to set one you can start looping straight away and it will figure that out for you and what's really clever is because it's loops it's seamless audio you tap one of the circles and it will instantly start recording and then you tap the circle again it will stop the record but the playback will happen instantly. Also, at that point, when you record your very first clip, that's when Loopy Pro calculates what the BPM is. Alternatively, you can set the BPM yourself, and I'll show you that in a moment. One shots are actually shown as squares, so loops are circles, one shots are squares or rectangles. The best way to think about this is a loop goes round and round and round, and the reason for the square or the rectangle is because it plays linearly. So as you look at it, it plays from left to right. Now you might use one shots as samples for drum pads, or maybe a vocal line, or just a sound effect. You can have both kind of clips, both circles and squares in Loopy Pro, and the clips can record from anywhere, from the microphone that's built into the iPhone or the iPad, or any hardware that you've plugged into the device, or from an AUV three audio unit like a synthesizer. What's amazing with this is you can even resample those clips into new clips, which means you can put Loopy Pro's output back into another clip. Clips can also be made by dragging audio into Loopy Pro from another app. Maybe you've got samples in the Files app. You can actually have them side by side and just drag them in. Or you can copy and paste from another app, say for example, Audio Share. Or with the power of iOS, you can even airdrop to Loopy Pro. And with being able to plug in hard drives into things like iPads and iPhones now, you can copy audio clips from external sources that are plugged in, like a pen drive, or a hard drive. Now when you're recording a sound or you're importing a sound, the clip will try and optimize the BPM, but you can dictate this in the settings once you've imported it. The other thing with clips is the loops can be grouped together into what's called sections, which can either play all together and stop all together, or you can play one at a time and the next one cancels the first one out. You can configure with the play and the stop options for a count in or a count out, and you can also configure each clip to whether they actually play when you just tap it, or you have to hold it down and then let go and it will stop. The next thing that looks obvious when you launch your first session is the colors. When you launch a blank session, you present it with 10 loops and they're in five different colors. Colors are incredibly important in Loopy Pro because they dictate the audio routing and the mixer. Both loops and one shots can be color coded and you can change the colors and add more. It's a great visual distinction between clips in your project, but think of colors like tracks in a digital audio workstation. So for example, I've got orange, yellow, green, blue and purple. And if I open the mixer, you can see we've got exactly the same colors and we've got five tracks. Colors have an additional role and that's the customization of the behavior. The settings for each clip can be defined in three different ways. One is globally, so every clip works the same. Individually, so each clip can work individually, whether they play back differently or record differently. But the third one is actually by color. You can override the global settings and change it by color. So therefore that color will only do that one thing. Whereas the global settings will carry on for all the other colors. It's totally up to you and this makes this highly customizable. Now the third thing you can add to the performance is widgets. So we have clips that are loops or one shots and widgets can be a load of different things. So there are buttons, sliders, XY pads, text labels, and even clip slicers. And with updates, there are some more widgets on the way. But why do widgets exist? Well, widgets are there to actually help you control the clips even more 
or control other things like volumes and effects. Maybe I've got a slider which is a volume slider and instead of having to go into the mixer, I can control three different clips all at the same time with the same volume slider. Additionally, if you've got multiple effects, you may want to actually add an XY pad, and then you can program that up to tell it which effects to use it with and give you a lot more control during your performance. Let's just take a quick look around all the different controls that you can see on Loopy Pro. We're gonna start at the top left-hand corner, which is your project manager. Right here, we can get a brand new project, and if you don't give it a name, Loopy Pro comes up with one. So at the moment, this is called Abrupt Ferryboat. You can save this project, duplicate it if it's got audio clips in it. This one doesn't at the moment, that's why it's not available. And I can export as well. You have projects and you have recordings. Now, as well as your projects, you can actually record your session. And then you also have media. The next two are arrows, and this is for undo and redo. Loopy Pro is completely non-destructive, and you can undo each step that you've done, or redo what each step that you've done as well. The play button is to play the project. So if we record something in, one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. You can see the way the audio file works and you can see that it uses the audio to make a little bounce effect to show you the audio is playing. There's also circles going outside the main circle to show you where you are in the loop. Now we have a pause button at the top here. I'm gonna press it and that'll stop the entire project. If I have this playing and I tap the circle, it will cue it up to stop it. Now, if there are other loops going at the same time, the project will carry on playing. I can play the project without the loop playing, and I can bring it back in, and it will queue it up. This is by default, and you can change this so it will come in instantly. You'll notice a tiny little waveform next door to this loop. And if you actually click this, it shows you the waveform, and this is the first clip. So this clip is actually the one that's dictating the BPM of this entire project. So if it's not right, we could change that. Now Loopy Pro is pretty clever to understand where the audio began and where the audio ended, and you can see that here. But if it got it wrong, maybe it was double the speed and it's figured it out wrong, then you can half the speed, you can times the speed, you can see how many bars it is, and you can just pinch and zoom and drag the endpoints wherever you want to. The common mistake it might do, as I say, is if you've done something for 70 beats per minute and to put it at 140, you can go in here and you can hit divide, so it's actually dividing it in half and it gets you the right BPM, but for this example, it got it right. As you continue to add loops, you'll notice we've got 10 different loops, but you can add as many as you want. And I really do mean as many as you want. And we'll get into how you add them a little bit later. On the top right-hand corner, you can see REC, that is record, and you can actually record the session, you can record audio, or you can record the whole sequence. With the configuration, you can see it's combined, so it's the input of the iPad as well as the loops, maybe you're playing and singing, or maybe you just want the combination of the output or the input, or you only want certain groups. You can also turn lossless recording on as well, so it's completely uncompressed. You can also record a sequence, and this will actually add your recordings into the sequencer. The next one is the BPM, but it's actually the clock, and the clock is is really important. Of course, as we discussed before, we've picked the BPM from the very first loop, but if you tap up here, you can actually see an entire control, and we're gonna go over that in another video. Finally, on the top, you've got your settings, and this is clip settings, your color settings, your synchronization, your MIDI, your metronome, everything to do with Loopy Pro and that session. At the bottom of the page, you've got a couple of things as well. Starting at the bottom left-hand corner, you've got the mixer. So this is the mixer here, and when you actually click on it, I showed it to you before, you can actually add things, inputs, AUV3 plugins, MIDI, and more colors for your clips. We're gonna be discussing the mixer in a completely separate video, because it's quite a lot. The next button switches, so at the moment we're on the loops, and then if you can have a look here, it shows you a sequencer. And now we're on the sequencer, you can see it's gone to nine little circles. So if you tap it again, it goes back to loops. So it switches between one page and the other. The sequencer is exactly as you expect. It's a digital audio workstation at your fingertips. Now when you hit record at the top right hand corner, you can record a stereo track of your performance or you can record into the sequencer. Again, this is huge and we're gonna cover this in another video in the series. The next one is the pencil and this is where Loopy Pro comes into its own because what you can do is you can customize the entire project. I can add loops, I can add clips, one shots, buttons, I can add all these different kinds of things, I can even add text and move it 
wherever I want to. I can continue to add things and the whole thing gets a much bigger project and I can move things around to exactly where I want them depending on your project. Again, this is something that is huge and we're gonna cover in another video. Back in the main page, next door to the pencil is a tiny little X. And when you click this, the loops spin around and this is where you can actually delete the loop. Be aware with this, you can still get it back with the undo, but it's a real quick way of getting rid of the loop or getting rid of a series of loops all in one go. On the bottom right hand side in the corner, you'll see a percentage. And this is how much percentage of the hardware that Loopy Pro is taking up. The more advanced device you, you have, the less percentage it's gonna take because the brain inside the iPad or the iPhone is more advanced. But it shows you how much hardware it's taking up. So of course, if you do run into problems, it may be because it's taking up a lot of the iPad's memory. And the last two on the bottom right hand corner is a loop, which we can add on and also a one shot. Now this goes hand in hand with the pencil if you're adding things to your performance, but let's say you're live right now and you're performing and all of a sudden you go, I need one more loop that's separate. You can add it in really quickly. You can even add this in whilst the whole thing is playing and it won't affect the performance at all. That's the overview of Loopy Pro. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about looping, overdubbing, gestures, and controls.